Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu warned of a stronger military response to any resumption of Palestinian attacks. Earlier militants from Hamas, the dominant group in Gaza, and Islamic Jihad fired dozens of rockets and mortar bombs at southern Israel throughout Tuesday and overnight. Israel responded with tank and air strikes on more than 50 targets in the small coastal enclave. U.S. President Donald Trump criticized Disney CEO Bob Iger for apologizing for Roseanne Barr's racist tweet that led to the cancellation of her hit ABC show, but failing to show remorse about statements made about the president on the network. In a tweet, Trump said, and I quote, Bob Iger of a ABC called Valerie Jarrett to let her know that ABC does not tolerate comments like those made by Roseanne Barr. He never called President Donald J. Trump to apologize for the horrible statements made and said about me on ABC. Maybe I just didn't get the call, unquote. U.S. President Donald Trump has signed legislation that would help people with deadly diseases try experimental treatments. Trump signed the Right to Try bill and... Uh, he called it a fundamental freedom that will provide hope and save lives. The bill cleared the House last week following an emotional debate in which Republicans said it could help thousands of people in search of hope. Many Democrats said the measure was dangerous and would give patients false hope. Armed militant attacked the uh, Interior Ministry in Kabul, killing at least one police officer and injuring five others. Najib Danish, a spokesman for the ministry, said a group of 10 gunmen launched a coordinated attack on the Interior Ministry's main office at around noon local time. The first attacker detonated his explosive vest at the front gate before a second group of gunmen dressed in military uniforms tried to storm the facility. Preparations for the potential Singapore summit between U.S. President Donald Trump and the top leader of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, Kim Jong-un, are ongoing as both sides pressed ahead with arrangements despite recent setbacks. Sung Kim, former U.S. ambassador to South Korea and former nuclear negotiator with the DPRK, concluded another round of talks with the DPRK Vice Foreign Minister Cho Son Hui at Panmunjom. North Korean General Kim Yong-chol held talks with U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. Kim became the most senior North Korean envoy to hold talks with American officials on the U.S. soil in 18 years. The former spy chief is a trusted advisor to North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and is playing a pivotal role in pre preparations for the historic summit between Kim and Donald Trump. The UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has said that solving the crisis in central Mali was crucial to achieving peace in the country during a visit to Mopti. Mali is the worst affected by Islamist militants and violence has been rising across the country, especially in its desert, desert north. Central Mali's once peaceful Mopti region has become a new flashpoint for violence over the past years. Movie producer Harvey Weinstein has been indicted on charges of rape and a criminal sexual act. Weinstein's indictment by a grand jury follows his arrest in a court appearance last Friday on charges related to two among the scores of women who have accused him of sexual misconduct, all of which he has denied. Hurricane Maria claimed the lives of, of over 4,000 people in Puerto Rico last year and not the 64 long pegged by the island's government as the official death toll. The researchers estimated that uh, most victims of the storm died between September 20th and December 31st, 2017 as a direct or indirect result of Puerto Rico's worst natural disaster in 90 years. One third perished because of delayed or inter interrupted medical care. 
On World Tobacco Day, the World Health Organization has released a report. The report says fewer people are smoking worldwide, especially women, but only one country in eight is on track to meet the target of reducing tobacco use significantly by 2025. WHO said 3 million people die prematurely each year due to tobacco use that causes cardiovascular diseases such as heart attacks and strokes. Donald Trump has said that he expects major drug companies to cut prices on their products in two weeks but did not provide details on which companies would do so or the means by which they would provide such reductions. Earlier this month, Trump unveiled the administration's plan to lower prescription drug prices. China urged the United States to meet it halfway on trade issues in the spirit of joint statement. Hua Chungying, the spokeswoman for Chinese Foreign Ministry, said that this was when commenting on the White House's statement that renewed the U.S. threat to impose 25% tariffs on 50 billion U.S. dollars worth of Chinese imports after mid-June. Russian journalists and activists celebrated after news emerged that dissident Russian journalist who was uh, reported murdered in Kiev was actually alive. Ukrainian authorities had said that Arkady Babchenko had been shot dead at his flat and that his wife had found him in a pool of blood. But the journalist later said he had been part of a Ukrainian operation to, to thwart a Russian attempt on his life and expose those behind it. Anti-Kremlin journalist Arkady Babchenko appeared alive and well at a press conference in Kiev as Ukraine admitted it had faked his death to expose an alleged Russian plot to kill him. Onlookers gasped and applauded as Babchenko appeared, introduced by the head of Ukraine's security service, who said the murder had been staged in order to foil an attempt on his life by Moscow. Babchenko also met President of Ukraine Petro Poroshenko. German Chancellor Angela Merkel uh, arrived in uh, Porto for a two-day visit to Portugal. Merkel was uh, greeted by Portuguese Prime Minister Antonio Costa before heading to the Portuguese city of Braga to attend the inauguration of Bosch's new Center for Research and Development. Merkel will also meet with the Costa and Portuguese President Marcelo Rebelo de Sousa in Lisbon. Brazilian oil workers began a 72-hour strike in a new blow to President Michel Temer following a nationwide trucker protest that has strangled Latin America's largest economy for over a week. The strike affecting several rigs, refineries, plants and ports is the latest challenge for state-led oil firm, Petro, whose shares have tumbled nearly 30% in two weeks. An attorney for U.S. President Donald Trump's longtime personal lawyer, Michael Cohen, accused porn star Stormy Daniels' lawyer in federal court of leaking Cohen's bank records, calling it a drive-by shooting of my client's rights. In a hearing before U.S. District Judge Kimba Wood in Manhattan, Cohen attorney Stephen Ryan also called the alleged leak by Daniels' attorney, Michael Avenatti, reckless, malicious and intentional. U.S. President Donald Trump took a few swings of a golf club on the South Lawn during an event for the White House's Sports and Fitness Day. Trump fully suited, teed up underneath an inflatable arch before taking a few practice swings and striking the ball. The, witness, the Fitness Day celebration came just days after Trump made two visits to his golf club in Sterling over the Memorial Day weekend. Donald Trump met with reality TV star Kim Kardashian at the White House. Caught Kardashian, cameras caught Kardashian entering and leaving the West Wing and Trump later tweeted a photo of their meeting which was scheduled to be a talk about 
prison reform and sentencing. Kardashian has urged Trump to pardon 63-year-old Alice Murray Johnson, who is serving a life sentence without parole for a non-violent drug offense. Flooding in central Cuba caused by torrential rainfall in the wake of the subtropical storm Alberto has killed four people and prompted the evacuation of tens of thousands. After rain dumped more than four inches of water in 24 hours, flood water swept away a bridge and damaged roads and other infrastructure, leaving many communities cut off and nearly 60,000 people without electricity. Italy's political crisis moved into uncharted waters as the head of state sought a last-minute political compromise to end the three-month search for a government and restore calm to financial markets. Prime Minister-designate Carlo Cortarelli, tasked by the president with calming tensions and laying plans for repeat elections later this year, raised hopes of a breakthrough with comments suggesting compromise was in the air. Lava from Kilauea continued to spew near Pahoa as an eruption from Fissure 8 sent molten rock more than 200 feet into the air. The eruption fed a lava flow that was traveling northeast on the island, according to the U.S. Geological Survey, who released aerial and ground footage of the fissure. China and Laos agreed to advance the building of a community of shared future to achieve new outcomes. The agreement was reached during the talks between Chinese President Xi Jinping, who is also General Secretary of the Communist Party of China, Central Committee and Laotian President Bon Hang Warachit, also General Secretary of the Lao People's Revolutionary Party, Central Committee in Beijing. One of the world's rarest animals, a white bison, has been born at Belgrade Zoo. The calf, named Dusanka, was born on Monday and trotted around her enclosure in good health. Many Native Americans consider white bison to be a good omen and a symbol of hope. Earlier, thousands of Native Americans joined in celebrations of the birth of a white bison female in the U.S. state of Wisconsin in 1994. Footage recorded a police officer saving a baby from choking in Marietta in Georgia. Officer Saint Ong used training from his time in the Matain Corps and as an officer at the Marietta Police Department to act fast when the officers received a call that the infant was not breathing and turning blue. In the video, after a few minutes, the baby can be seen moving and breathing again. Visitors at Frankfurt Zoo were treated to the sight of uh, three six-week-old lion cubs for the first time. The miniature kings and queens of the animal kingdom had spent their time in the birthing tent of their mother Zarina, who, according to the zoo, has been calmly looking after her babies despite her inexperience as a first-time mother. Police confirmed that a pilot died in a helicopter crash in the North Yorkshire, England. Emergency services arrived at the scene to find the helicopter on fire. North Yorkshire are working with the Air Accidents Investigation Branch and the Civil Aviation Authority to establish the cause of the crash. The eight people accused in the case of the rape and murder of an eight-year-old girl from a minority nomadic community in Katua will be produced before a court in Patan Court in Punjab in accordance with the directions of the Supreme Court. The Jammu and Kashmir's elite crime branch will produce the charge sheet in the case. Former footballer Bai Chung Bhutia is set to formally launch his party today to challenge the Sikkim Democratic Front or the SDF, which has been ruling the state for close to 25 years. Bhutia said his focus would be to strengthen his Hamro Sikkim party to oust the state's longest serving Chief Minister Pawan Chamling. Hours after seeking protection from arrest in the ASL Maxis case, former Finance Minister Peter Dumbram moved to the Delhi High Court for an anticipatory bill in the INX media case. 
The court will now hear the matter today. CBI and Enforcement Directorate have been probing Chidambrams and his son Karthi's role in the alleged kickbacks for facilitating foreign investment promotion board clearance to the media company in 2007. Local residents in various parts of northern India struggle to cope with the prevailing heatwave conditions, making it difficult for people to carry on with their daily chores and getting severe cases of diarrhea and dehydration. Roads and riverfronts in India's northern holy city Varanasi were seen deserted as the empty roads scorched under mercury hovering over 40 degrees. Queen Maxima of the Netherlands met famous tiffin carriers of India's financial capital Mumbai, better known as the Dabbawalas. On the occasion, the group of lunchmen presented a memento to the Queen in the form of framed miniature traditional lunch boxes. A member of the community, Sopan Mare, who also attended Britain's Prince Charles' second marriage, says that they feel they felt elevated. They feel elevated when members of royal families come and meet them. Indian Federal Police have filed a case against AirAsia Group, the airline CEO Tony Fernandez and his domestic entity AirAsia India over allegations of corruption and breaking rules in obtaining a flying license. The CBI accused the airline, some of its employees and third parties of violating India's foreign direct investment rules. Representatives of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development to OECD member states gathered to update its family photo as two new members joined the group. The OECD officially welcomed Colombia and Lithuania as its 36th and 37th members at the organization's week-long forum at its headquarters in Paris. The Lithuanian president has said her country is ready to move forward as part of the economic group. Bollywood actress Kajol has voiced the character Helen Parr, also known as Elastic Girl, in the Hindi version of the animated film Incredibles 2. Kajol added, and I quote, There were so many moments in the story that I could relate to and I knew I had to join the fun, unquote. Now the film will release on the, in, in India on the 22nd of June in English, Hindi, Tamil and Telugu. In an attempt to expose predatory journals which publish papers for money, an MIT researcher has managed to get a fake computer-generated study published with co-authors Kim Kardashian and Satoshi Nakamoto, the unknown inventor of Bitcoin. The researcher remarked the peer review was finished in just four days and jokingly re recommended the drug studies journal to all his colleagues. Bollywood actor Rajkumar Rao has said that he had a great experience working with both actors Aishwarya Rai Bachchan and Anil Kapoor in their uh, upcoming film Panne Khan. Rajkumar added that the film has shaped out quite well and he is very happy with it. Panne Khan is the Hindi adaptation of the Dutch film Everybody is Famous. Hollywood actor Morgan Freeman's lawyer Robert Schwartz has asked a media network to apologize and withdraw the article in which eight women accused Freeman of harassment and inappropriate behavior. In a letter to the media network, the attorney, the attorney alleged that the piece suffers from malicious intent, falsehoods and journalistic malpractice. ABC Network cancelled its hit reboot of Roseanne following star Roseanne Barr's racist tweet that referred to former U.S. President Barack Obama's advisor Valerie Jarrett as a product of the Muslim Brotherhood and the Planet of the Apes. The tweet triggered an outrage on the social media platform.